Um, thanks for joining. This is the tech lunch for March 2021 for the HFI Kenya program. Uh, my name is Dan Sweeney, and this time we're going to be talking about briquette binders. Um, so these are the materials that are used to hold our char together and keep the shape and form by the time it reaches the customers so that they can you know, use it in their cook stove or whatever device that they're wanting to use it in. Um, so the goals for today are pretty straightforward. We're just gonna look through a few of the options for binder materials for char briquettes. Um, we'll mostly just look at some of the common ones and a few that I think I've heard people using a, a little bit, but uh, maybe are not so common. Um, there's a lot of different binder materials out there. Uh, so I was doing some research preparing for this and, you know, it turns out that yeah, binders are, there's a whole field of science and engineering around binders. And um, so there's a lot of different types of binders too. Um, there are binders that are used to coat the surface of particles. And then once you put the particles together, um, those will stick to each other. So that's a lot of what is used in the char briquettes, but there are other binders which are more of what they call a matrix. And that means that um, the binder itself creates a lot of the material of the briquette, the mass of the briquette takes up a lot of that volume um, and fills in a lot of the spaces where there's not char or whatever material that you're trying to bind together. There are other binders that are actual chemical binders. So when you mix the components of the binder together, it actually creates a chemical reaction, which really fuses um, all, that whole, all of those materials together in the briquette. So um, there's a lot, I'm, I give a couple of resources at the end in case you wanna learn more about all the different types. Um, there may be some other types that we should actually be considering. And I look forward to people's comments on that um, later on. So if you know of something else that I haven't covered, then feel free to, uh, to follow up and we can continue the discussion. So here's some of the common binders that we know about for uh, charcoal briquettes. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about some advantages and disadvantages of each of these, but just briefly, clay, I think pretty much we're all familiar with. Um, this would be gathered from the soil. And um, yeah, I think a, a lot of people have used this early on in, in char briquettes, maybe as you're experimenting or testing. But even still, uh, some that scale up continue to mix in a little bit of clay. And I think that's an important note to make. There are combinations or what they call composite binders. So that they combine different um, common binders or maybe a chemical and a surface binder uh, to get more str stronger bond maybe or better water resistance. Um, so I, I know some people still use clay. For example, if you're trying to do space heating, you know, the clay actually maybe serves as like a, a, a combustion inhibitor. It actually slows down the burning of the briquette. Um, so that's one example. Uh, cassava, I think, is another very common one. Um, you could either use um, the just... Um, freshly grown root vegetable, or sometimes people use the, the waste um, from the cassava. Uh, industrial starch is another one that I think is becoming more common. This kind of like cassava is made from the starchy root vegetables. So uh, it could be made from maize or corn. I think those are quite common or from potato, from cassava also. 
uh, but it's a processed form of the raw cassava. It's it's been it's not only dried and milled, but actually the starch content has in, has been increased um, through some industrial processing. Molasses, I think, is also becoming more common. So this is a byproduct from the sugar cane or sugar production. Could be from sugar cane or sugar beets. Um, and in some places it has other uses. Um, sometimes, yeah, it's used to make actually a food product. Um, not always though. And I think there's quite a lot of it produced. It can all, it has, various other uses like it can actually be used to make um, ethanol or other liquid uh, alcohols so uh, but it, it serves as a pretty good binder we'll talk about it a little bit more gum arabic or gum arabica um, is another up and coming binder i would say um, i don't really have much experience with it so i'm unfortunately i don't know a lot about how it behaves as a binder but um, just based on the fact that it's uh, it's a material that comes from trees in the in the form of sap i mean my experience with sap is it's very sticky and and bonds uh, to things quite well cement is another binder that's common it's used in a lot of different industries obviously as a binder you can um, uh, really use it in a variety of different ways. People use it for briquettes, like especially I think in the iron industry, they, they often make briquettes of like iron ore or small iron particles. Um, but even I think in, in some fuel briquettes, uh, a small amount of cement could be added to, to probably have a big effect on the strength of the briquette. Um, and then wood tar is another one that I'm putting in there. I, as I was reading, they mentioned the use of um, tar or bitumen or creosote uh, from either coal or petroleum. And uh, I thought also there's, there's some cases where people are capturing this wood vinegar or wood tar, and it could be something interesting for some of our producers in HFI to think about. If you're carbonizing and using a setup that you actually cap capture some of these liquids, um, then yeah, this could be an interesting thing to try. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of all of these. Um, and then uh, maybe if, yeah, if, if others have any updates, I can, I can provide some changes to this, but uh, before we do that, I just wanted to brainstorm a little bit about what are some of the important characteristics of a binder. Um, so I'm, I actually don't have this list complete. So I thought we could start to populate it together. So I don't know if Moza, if you have any ideas, what, are, what would we value in a binder if you're able to add anything now? So one thing I would say, I mean, just the, the definition of binder, it should be able to bond the material together. So I would say the strength of the bond. So you want a, you would want a strong briquette, right? And the binder plays a pretty important role there. Um, another thing that I thought would be cost and related to that, I think is amount required in the char mixture to bond the char mixture. So you might have a binder that's pretty expensive, maybe like industrial starch is relatively more expensive than just, um, milled cassava, but you also need less of it. So in the end, it may not be as significant a cost. Um, 
I think another one I thought about was toxicity. So is it harmful either from an environmental perspective or um, for human health, especially in our case, we're oftentimes burning this, uh, these briquettes um, with people around, would it potentially emit any odors or vapors or uh, any emissions that are going to be harmful to our users. So I think that's really important. And then um, another, I think, really important one for us is, will it affect the amount of ash? So maybe contribute to ash formation. So I think that's a really important characteristic. Even better, is it combustible? Does it actually add some fuel value uh, to the briquette? So so that's a partial list, at least. We can keep adding to that uh, when we discuss later. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to show now is a comparison. So I mentioned a few common briquettes. I'm actually going to put up a table here. So this is just some information that I've gathered, also my own personal experience using different types of binders. And um, oops, sorry. And so, okay, so we have over here in the first column the different types of binders. The second column is the source and then a comparison of the cost. Uh, is it combustible or not? What is the strength of the bond? And then moisture resistance. So I didn't get very specific because, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, information that isn't that consistent. If, I, if you read the literature, I talk to a few people or I use my own experience. So what I've done is just kind of given qualitative indicators. So if we kind of go down the list here for cost, um, clay is obviously probably one of the cheapest binders, especially if you're in a place where you can gather it easily. Um, if you're not, then it could be more expensive, you're transporting, et cetera. So on the other end of the spectrum, you we have industrial starch and uh, wood tar, I think if you have to purchase it, it, it can be quite expensive uh, based on the research that I did. If you're able to produce it yourself, obviously you're recovering a byproduct from carbonization or pyrolysis. So uh, the cost may not be so, so, so significant, but um, I thought for most people, it would be something you'd have to purchase or at least supplement with what you produce. Industrial starch, I think is I don't have, I didn't have specific information on the cost, but I know in a lot of cases it has to be imported and purchased in bulk. And so that can uh, make it quite expensive. Um, but again, like I said, if we actually considered the cost per briquette or per kg of briquettes, um, it could it may not be as expensive because i know that you need less industrial starch than say cassava um, milled cassava right you could because it has a much stronger bonding uh, effect so then in the middle there's these others i think cement gum arabic uh, molasses cassava um, those may be some may be cheaper more expensive depending on where you're at what you have access to um i i don't again i don't have much experience with gum arabic um so i it may be more expensive than i'm estimating but it was around the same order as maybe cement or molasses from what i could tell so um so the next column is is it is the combustibility. So I just have, is it combustible here? Um, so again, these are just, you know, qualitative. So if it's the more flames from a one flame up to three flames, the more combustible it is. And so the way that I estimated this was 
I looked at the chemical structure of the binder to see if is it composed of organic matter is the the main thing and and more specifically does it is it composed of hydrogen carbon and oxygen some combination of those which we know will uh, should combust um, in the right conditions and so actually i think that's nice in our case because we know that the users really care a lot about you know the heat output of the briquettes they also care about the ash that's left over so if you're using something like clay it um it is not combustible. It's a mineral, you know, it's made up of, of mostly minerals or what do we call inorganic matter, not organic matter. And so um, it really doesn't contribute any anything to the fuel value. And most of the clay binder that you add will be left over as ash. Uh, all the clay binder that you add will be left over as ash. And the users tend to to not like that. You we all know that. Um, so cassava and industrial starch, those are both starches. Um, that's a carbohydrate, carbons, oxygens, uh, carbons and hydrogens. Um, it converts into sugars, glucose, um, when heating. And those we know are combustible. Um, I won't go into the chemistry behind that because I'm not prepared to, but uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, in general, uh, it's possible that the cassava also has some inorganic matter, some mineral content that it takes up as it's growing. So I think it'll it'll produce a little bit of ash. Not all of it will burn away, but the the core starch component, which is even more in industrial starch, uh, will burn. Molasses is, um, I mean, it, a lot of it is actually just water. But once you dry out the water. Uh, there's a lot of sugars in there, and those are carbons and hydrogens again. So uh, those would combust. But again, probably there's some, uh, in, in reality, the raw molasses will probably have some inorganic matter too. So I might downgrade this, maybe two and a half or two. If it's a quality, high quality molasses, um, then it should contribute quite a lot. And actually, the the contribution of the calorific value will be pretty substantial because those sugars are containing a lot of energy. Uh, gum arabic would be similar. Um, again, I couldn't find a lot of, of data on this, but I know some of our group has experience. Um, but in the right temperature conditions, this will ignite and combust and produce a lot of heat also. Uh, the same is true for wood tar. Um, especially once once we've removed the water, because there's generally, I think, when you capture this wood tar, wood vinegar, uh, a lot of water is captured with that during um, carbonization. So that has the potential to be a really nice um, fuel additive uh, in addition to a binder. Um, so I think there's some promise to that, maybe even mixing in a little bit of that if we're using clay or cassava um if that's an option that's available so cement obviously is uh it's mostly mineral content um lime and some other things so sorry that got cut off there but yeah um cement doesn't do much for us in terms of uh, our fuel properties so it's a one flame rating here um, the bond strength, actually, so we have, you know, relatively lower bond strength in clay. So this, this relates to the strength of the briquette. Um, and, you know, according to the KEB standard, we, we actually do a test for durability, um, the drop test to determine the strength. So the binder will play an important role there, right? If we don't use enough binder or the wrong type, it's not creating a strong enough bond. Um, we don't have much strength. So I'm showing the flexed arm muscles uh, as the rating here. So clay doesn't rate very well, although it is a binder. It does provide some strength as a binder. Um, but compared to some of these others, it doesn't, uh, it's not as strong of a bond. 
Um, so in the middle category, we'd have cassava, molasses, gum arabic, wood tar. I haven't actually tested all these. So, you know, something like gum arabic may be a much better bond than I know about. So please correct me if you think this is not correct. But based on what I could tell from reading and um, literature, um, these are kind of the middle tier. And we know a lot about you know, using cassava. It's, it's a bit better than clay, sticky. Maybe you don't need to use as much of it to create the same bond strength. So um, it's a two, uh, two muscle rating here. And then in the top tier, uh, we have industrial starch and cement, you know, is obviously a really strong chemical bonding agent, right? Um, so industrial starch, uh, again, you know, it's been, it's like the cassava porridge, but it's been, um, refined and processed. So the starch content is much higher and the starch is really what gives us that, um, sticky bonding quality to the bind. Uh, so another thing that I didn't mention last time is moisture resistance and, so that, that could be really important for us if we're in maybe a humid place or there's a potential the briquettes, you know, may get rained on um, or, you know, from the, during use, I think I've, I've seen a lot of cases where, you know, things get spilled. And so in these lower moisture resistant um, materials like cassava, uh, the cassava binder, after it's dried out, after the briquette is dried out, it actually has a tendency to take in water. So the starches in cassava and industrial starch, they're, but they're very hydrophilic. They like water, so um, they're happy to take it in. Whereas something like tar and gum arabic, maybe also cement, molasses, these are more resistant to taking in water. Even clay, actually, clay does not absorb water very well. Even in the soil, we see that it sheds water or it can create pools of water, right? So the lower rated ones here are the starch um, binders and then the higher rated would be obviously these like petroleum products or wood tar, which are very hydrophobic. Where they, they repel water really nicely. Um, and again, gum arabic, I, do, I don't have much data on that, but um, it seemed like it had some good qualities for uh, water resistance. So I think that actually is about all that I have for today. So let me just see if we have, here's a couple of resources. Uh, there's an article here from a couple of years ago, which offers a nice, nice review. They actually cover a lot more binders than what I've talked about here. They covered a lot that I'd never even heard of um, and a lot that are used in different industries, even other than uh, fuel briquette uh, production. This was another nice paper, a little bit shorter, more accessible. And so I would suggest this one. It's freely available in a PDF on the Internet. So those are the resources. And so that's all I have for today. Um, Hope you learned something about binders and hope that we can connect again and speak more about this.